day everyone, the time has come once again to learn how to use Emacs. Today we will start our ventures into external packages. If you are in Emacs right now, I am going to recommend you to take a look at the package manager. Now you can obviously do MX, you already know that. And we are going to invoke a function called list packages. Um, list packages simply, well, I mean it does what it says on the tin, it lists packages. I would also like to take this moment to um, explain to you that you can use spacebar inside of, um, of you know, the mini buffer to not insert white space but instead insert um, dashes. This is important because functions in Lisp and Elisp may not contain those. You cannot have white space in a function. So instead of white spaces they typically use dashes. If you are using a keyboard layout like mine, where dash um, is at a spot that's not very easy to reach and that isn't very fast to reach, now you can get used to using um, space instead. This packages, it has tab completion, so let's not worry about it. And there we go. Those are the packages. You have heard so much about Emacs having a lot of packages. This does not look like a lot of packages. We can scroll down. I'm using my mouse wheel, because why not? Some of them are incompatible, some are built in, a lot of, are, of, the, a lot of them are available, but that's not, uh, that's not enough packages. That really isn't. So, because it's a normal package manager, we can add additional repositories. This, or the ones you have by default, is the GNU ELPA repository. It does not have a lot of packages, but luckily there is other repos that have a lot of them. Um, it's called Melpa, as you can see, it says that right here, because I am redoing this video for the third time, because my mailman is an idiot, apparently. Let's go to melpa.org, let's have a look, shall we? Current list of packages, 3835, with nearly 59 million downloads to date. Pretty good, pretty good. Now, if you click on getting started, it's going to tell you exactly how to add it. We are not going to do that. We are going to use a lot, a much simpler method. Um, but how do we do it? Well, we have to edit our initialization file, our edit.el. Let us visit this file with Control X, Control F, and find it. Emacs D and it el. First thing you realize, Emacs has added something to our config file. Actually, a package called package has done so. As you can see, I mean, it says that's right there. It added a line called package initialize. What package initialize does is it just has to be there. Package initialize makes sure that all the packages are loaded or it, or the, the package package is initialized before um, any of your actual configuration. Package is a package that aids in installing packages. I, I don't, I mean, I can't do it. I can't do it. There's just too many packages. But let's ignore this for now. Let's get rid of the comments. Let's clear these lines with control shift backspace, for instance. And let's do a few other things. First of all, in Elisp, you can, there's a keyword called require. As you can see, we do have um, syntax highlighting. It just wasn't apparent because we haven't done anything special so far. And we are going to require package. Uh, what this does is this package needs to be loaded at this point for um, for Emacs to continue actually functioning properly. We can also disable um, a function for package that means it's enabled at startup. And I'm going to, this is the one time in this series where I'm going to just tell you to trust me because explaining all of it, uh, it's, it's a bit, uh, uh, you know, out of scope. I'm not here to teach you Lisp because that's, there is a lot better videos for this. If you are interested in Lisp, I recommend Derek Banner's um, video on, like, learn Lisp in one video. I think it's really good. It works very well. Um, I watched it because I needed some, I needed to refresh my memory. And this is the part where we actually add uh, the Melpa repository to our um, packages or package archives, as they are called. We are going to use a function called add to list. The list we are adding to is called package archives. And we are going to be adding, hold on, let's do it like this. I'm going to be adding Melpa. 
and the URL for Malpa is https um, colon double slash malpa.org slash packages slash that's it. That's all there is to it. Now we have added this, so let's let's see if it works, shall we? Let's see if it works. Let's save this. Um, again, you don't need to close out Emacs to reload this file. You can have all buffer presenter and that's it. Now if we do unlist packages, we will see that um, we now have a lot more packages and they have the archive is actually specified now. There's a lot of packages in here, a lot of them. Um, well, you can install packages in the most simple of manners. You can literally just click on them with your mouse or navigate with your keyboard and hit enter. It's going to give you another window here where you can just click on install, then click on Y because you have to confirm the installation. Um, and then follow the instructions down here. This is typically just a very, very tiny readme um, that has the most basic settings necessary to get things to run the way you want them to run. We are not going to be using this GUI, sort of GUI, sort of using mouse, using list packages way of installing it because it's pointless. There is, um, as a fact, there is packages that help you in installing other packages and managing your configuration. Um, Emacs configurations get out of, out of, you know, um, out of scope very quickly. They are, they get really, really huge. My Emacs configuration, it's mostly prose with some code, but it's over a thousand lines long as of now. And I just stripped like half of it because I decided I never use those features anyway. So let's look for a packer. We can, this is by the way, just a normal buffer. You can, we can move around. We can control S to search. And what we are looking for is called use package. Um, and there it is. Use package. A configuration macro for simplifying your .emacs. This is precisely what we need. Now we are not going to be using, or we are not going to click on it and install it. We are going to use it programmatically from our init el file. Um, so as already specified, we need a mechanism or a function that makes sure that use package is installed. So let's write one. Um, it's not very difficult. It's Lisp or and Elisp are a very verbose language. They are very literate. So even if you don't write code, you're going to un um, understand this. Unless um, package, let's see if I can still do this. Package installed p use package, which basically means you know, if this package is not installed, then I would like to call a function called package refresh contents, which makes sure that um, everything or that our package manager is synch synced with all our repositories. And then the last function that I would like to call is called package install. And as an argument, we are going to be passing in use package. Um, yes, you, you can see how um, it automatically shows the parentheses, the closing and opening parentheses. Very, very useful for Elisp. I am glad that this is the default functionality. Um, let's, you know, let's execute this. We don't need to evaluate the entire buffer. Again, we remember all we have to do is go to the end of an expression, control X, control E, and down there you'll see it says contacting host, Melpa, and it's parsing and downloading things. It has now done everything uh, we needed to do. We have use package installed now, which is great because use package makes it very, very easy to install other packages. How easy? I'm going to show you just about now because we are going to actually install one package, one single package that is going to make your life a lot easier. Um, forgive the clicking, but I am actually looking for something because I am a bit lost. Uh, what we have to look for is a package called which key. What does which key do? It's, it's not easier to show you than to really explain, but I figured, um, I figured I really should uh, show you what it does. It's before, before I actually, you know, get into talking about it. Which key, or I want to show you how to actually install packages now using use package. Very, very easy. Uh, we need parentheses and what we are using is use package. It's going to highlight now because we are using um, or we have syntax highlighting enabled. 
the package we are using is called which e just like this and there is more arguments that we can pass in one of them and my favorite one and the reason why i'm using use package is called ensure t and this is all we need to install a package what does ensure t do it makes sure that this package is installed the way we have set our file up you can copy this file with and as we continue it's still going to you know work you can copy this file put it on a different machine launch emacs and it's going to automatically install use package and then it's going to install which key just as just as easy the reason i'm showing you which key is because it's very informative so let's execute this one um it's contacting uh, the host it's compiling them and as you can see down at the bottom uh, emacs has added some more text to our configuration package selected packages we have now which key and use package installed which is good news i guess i really think that's good news now let me and i because we have noticed which key is installed now um it just doesn't do anything it does absolutely nothing packages oftentimes have to be enabled manually for them to work or they maybe have to be added to some list to work um, let me make this actually a bit bigger aside of ensure we can also pass in another argument to this function it's called init there is config and there is init init is a block of code that is executed after the package is initialized and in this init we are going to say which key mode that's it let's go to the end of this expression as evaluated and we are now done because now which key actually works when we start inputting a command for like for instance control x and not do anything we are going to get this nice non-intrusive buffer right down at the bottom that shows us all the possible completions for what we started this is something i wished i had when i started out it teaches it can teach you about as much you know anything even in even for me, every now and then you forget commands. It's human, you know, we all get old. So with which key you have access to all this, it's, Emacs is very self-documenting. We will go and talk about help in, soon enough. But for now, which key is one of the best extensions for, you know, imaginable because it has all these functions. You can do every bit of prefix or start inputting any command and it will just, you know, just work it will show you all of those completions it also shows you when you know a key is another prefix so if you continue it's going to simply um add what we clicked to our command and then display all the you know remaining possible completions which is great this is why i like it let's control g out of there i think that's enough for this video um we have a package manager working we also have installed use package. We have installed which key. We are we, we are done. We are actually we are not because we have a lot more to talk about and I have a lot of ideas for videos. In the next video, we are probably finally going to get rid of this ugly theme and possibly change the font because I have been using the same font for years and I want my custom font. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you followed along. I hope you can have some fun with which key now because since you are using Emacs and you are, you know, having your, taking your first steps in the world of Emacs, with which key, it's going to be a lot easier to find the functionality that you need. A lot of it. So, you know, I hope you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. And please, if you're having fun, then stay tuned. Thanks and bye-bye.